Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video. And so in this video, we will be taking a look at current conditions across the Atlantic Basin and we'll also be talking about uh, the potential for us to see development next week. I mean, the Euro model has been quite consistent with something developing. So we'll be taking a look at the latest predictions uh, in terms of that as well. And there is a recent update to one of the predictions for the hurricane season. We'll be talking about that briefly. And so before I go into details, Okay, and so now we're going to be talking about that recent update to the uh, hurricane season predictions. And so that is from the weather company. So their previous prediction was on the 14th of April and they expected 20 named storms of which eight could become hurricanes and four major hurricanes. And uh, in their recent update on the 17th of June, they are expecting 21 named storms, 9 hurricanes, and 4 major hurricanes. So that means that the number of named storms and hurricanes that they're expecting have increased by 1 each and so things are pretty quiet right now we've ho we've only had alex but that could change next week could we see tropical storm bonnie and is it likely to be a threat to land if it really does develop well let's go and see what is expected but first let's take a look at current conditions and so this is infrared satellites and we're seeing here that we have that cluster of showers and thunderstorms uh, out in the atlantic and just about to exit the coast of africa right there as we head more towards the west in the vicinity of the Lesser Antilles, we have a tropical wave that is likely bringing some inclement weather there. And then portions of Central America are experiencing quite a bit of rainfall in some areas as there's a lot of moisture there. So at the moment, there are no marked disturbances. However, again, Euro is pretty consistent with something developing. Let's go ahead and take a look at other conditions. And so now we have the Saharan air layer map. And so when you see colors like the dark orange go into the red and that pinkish shade, that is when we have a lot more dust abundant within the region. And so we're seeing that it is sort of dominating most of the tropical Atlantic out there and also in portions of the Caribbean, especially the northeastern side of the area. So areas such as uh, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands and portions of the Leeward Islands are likely having some hazy skies as a result of the Saharan dust. And so with an abundance out there, it is not likely that we will see much development of anything because uh, we need warm, moist conditions for tropical cyclones to develop and intensify. And so if that is lacking, then we would most likely not see anything major. And so now taking a look at the wind shear map. So the reds mean that things are unfavorable. The upper level winds are pretty strong and that really helps to inhibit development or intensification. Meanwhile, yellow means that things are mainly on the neutral side, nothing much uh, to really interfere with the systems, but green means we have a lot of favorable uh, conditions in terms of the shear. The shear won't be a problem for tropical cyclones that are trying to develop. And so for the Caribbean, we're seeing that we have a lot of unfavorable shear that is kind of persistent and also extending out into the Atlantic. And then mainly to the south of about 10 degrees north is where we have quite a bit of favorable shear that is noted within that area, uh, but that is only going to benefit systems that would be traveling a bit low latitude within that area. And so now moving on to what the various models are expecting. And so first things first, let's take a look at this. So these are ensemble tracks and we are seeing that something is definitely expected here. And we're seeing all these colors, especially those blues and that lighter blue shade that indicates winds of about 30 knots. Meanwhile, the darker shade indicates winds of about 40 knots. So 40 knots is tropical storm force winds. So I believe that's about uh, 45 miles per hour thereabouts. Meanwhile, 30 knots is about 35 miles per hour. So that is the pressure force. But we're seeing mainly those dark blues, especially as we head into the Caribbean with these ensemble tracks. So that's what our ensemble tracks are showing. So now let's actually go on and see what is expected first up by GFS. And so uh, this is by Saturday on the 2nd of July. And so here we have the system here, not really strong, but maybe 
something trying to develop but more than likely struggling if there is a lot of dry air and strong upper level winds out there. So we have quite a bit of moisture associated with that and GFS is showing somewhat of a northwesterly track with this and take a look at that high pressure system out there. It's all the way up north so that system would have that chance to curve around it and make its way to the northwest but if that high pressure system was centered a little bit more south then it's likely that this would be steered more to the west but GFS is showing that it is going to be up north and things will be just weak enough to allow the system to try to make its way uh, a bit more north. Meanwhile with the Euro model let's go ahead and see what Euro is expecting. So this is by Monday on the 27th and by that time the model is not showing something very significant in terms of the, uh, the system trying to develop. We just have a lot of moisture moving through. However as we head to Wednesday on the 29th when this thing here crosses into the Caribbean basin uh, here we are seeing that we have a 1009 millibar low pressure system and it looks a little bit better right so something trying to develop and compared to GFS there is that high pressure system that is maybe a little bit more to the south so the stronger we have that high pressure system actually being uh, the more these storms are going to be steered more to the west than the northwest because uh, these are like blockades that the storm actually can't go through unless things are weak enough to allow it to curve around the system but once it is strong it's just going to be pushing that system to the west and then by thursday on the 30th of the month euro eventually shows that we will have this thing here making its way to portions of central america so uh the northeasterly section of nicaragua and also honduras being impacted by this thing here maybe as a tropical storm so that is what the euro model is expecting for the system here and so uh, let's take a look at what the wind shear is expected to be at that point and so going to monday on the 27th of june we're seeing that we have that uh 10 12 low pressure system and we have some moderate to strong wind shear ahead of it however as the system makes its way into the caribbean we see that mainly moderate shear weak wind shear there about we're seeing those greens uh, those light green shades and those yellows which indicate that things are mainly moderate not so uh strong to enable no development at all but more than likely to keep it at a minimum so let's wait and see what's going to be happening guys because things are getting pretty interesting especially as we're going to be heading more and more into the hurricane season so things are quiet now but it's not expected to remain this way so we are just we're just likely going to be seeing increased activity as we head into the new month next week and also into august especially into august and september and so guys i would say that if we're portions of the Caribbean, especially the Lesser Antilles, please keep an eye out. Of course, I'll be keeping you updated as time goes by. So this is definitely something that we have to pay attention to as we're going to be heading into next week. And let's see what's going to be happening with it and so that is really it for this update video and if you found it to be quite informative please give a thumbs up and you can also share your thoughts with me in the comments or as a question i will try to respond as best and as soon as i can and of course remember to always be wise